of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for God. Good morning.
morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer on our second Sunday of Advent. Let us take a moment to still our hearts and minds for worship. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Please stand for our opening hymn of praise on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist's cry. The lighting of the Advent candle, the candle of peace. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we pray that this new candle, alongside the first, will kindle the hope of peace. May we reflect this season on moments when we have known peace, however light, however brief. May we prepare to receive new visions of peace and do what we can to bring your peace to the world. And may the peace which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the coming of the Prince of Peace in unexpected forms and ways. Amen. Open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Make haste to, to help, help us. us. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, Son and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah, 
inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when Christ shall come again to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before his glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord hands double for all her sins. A voice of cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord, the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass, the grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blow upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the God will stand forever. Get you up to the high mountain, Ozion, herald of God, tidings. Lift up your voice with a strange, O Jerusalem, herald, good of God, Tiding, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God with might, and he's our rule for him. His reward with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm and he carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother of sheep. The word of the God. Thanks be to God. Salem this morning is 85. Let me hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory might dwell in our land. Show us mercy, O oh Lord. Steadfast love and faith, faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. Show, Show us, us your, your mercy, mercy O oh Lord. Lord. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. 
Show us, us your mercy, mercy, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As it was, it was in the beginning, beginning and it now, will be forever. Will be forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the gospel, Christian. to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. Who will prepare your way? The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning dew. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of the gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing. speak to you now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We are often told that Advent is about waiting, waiting upon the arrival of the Lord. But why do we have to wait so long? Why did God wait so many centuries before the advent of the Messiah's birth? Why do we still have to wait so long for his returning in glory? Why doesn't God just act all at once, zapping us into salvation in an instant? Waiting on God's time is a profound mystery. Sometimes frustrating mystery. The Apostle Peter tries to address this problem of waiting by talking about the difference between divine and human conceptions of time. With the Lord, says Peter, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. God's timing is different than ours. He sees things in one eternal now. We live in time. 
in moments, in days, months, years, centuries, millennia. If we take a God's eye view of things, Peter argues, the Lord is not slow in delivering his promises. Quite the opposite. God's slowness is actually his patience with us. God's slowness is fulfilling his promises. Uh, sorry, God's slowness in fulfilling his promises is in reality our experience of his loving mercy. For Peter knows that God does not want anyone to perish because God desires everyone to come to repentance and have their sins forgiven. We should then regard our experience of waiting for Advent of the Messiah as the patience of the Lord, as God's ultimate plan for the salvation of humanity. The more time God gives us, the greater opportunity people have to come to him. It is he who is patient with us, not us with him. In our first reading from Isaiah, we are told that God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This image of God as the good shepherd gathering his lambs provides us with an icon of God's patience with us throughout history. As God gathers his flock into his arms, he does not do so forcibly or violently. God respects the free will of his creatures. He gave us free agency for a reason. His grace does not coerce his sheep into his arms against their will. God desires that we freely give ourselves to him. The shepherd gently, patiently, tenderly draws his sheep towards himself. The shepherd calls us by name and some might respond to their master's voice and run into his loving arms. Others might stubbornly ignore him and still others, well, they might just reject his voice entirely. You can see why God's process of gathering sheep might take time. Humans are pretty stubborn creatures, after all. And God knows this all too well. That's why he gives us time. The gift of time is his long-suffering patience with us. One Benedictine monk proposed that the whole of the Old Testament is one prolonged advent. He argues that God knew the human race could not have received the full majesty of Christ right after the fall. This is why the advent of the Savior's birth is revealed slowly, little by little, bit by bit. This is also God's patience at work. For so long, God's identity and voice was unknown to the nations. Many people may have heard the gentle voice of the shepherd, but they heard the Lord's voice as the voice of a stranger. Over several centuries, the strange voice of the Lord became more familiar to the people of Israel. The hearts of God's people were slowly prepared over time to recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd when he finally arrived. And year by year, bit by bit, God's promises also became more precise, more vivid. Over centuries, prophetic voices in the wilderness were preparing God's people to recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd. We are told that John the Baptist testified to the light that will enlighten everyone. That is, to the light of Christ. 
But the truth is, God has been raising up people to testify to the light of Christ from the very beginning. And testimony to that light only got brighter and more intense with the fullness of time. John the Baptist is the last in a long line of prophets who announced the advent of the way, the truth, and the life. This process of gradual revelation of the coming Messiah over time, this loving accommodation of God's glorious truth to our historical circumstances, this too is God's patience and charity towards us. But God's patience also grants us time for repentance. To repent means to turn around, to change one's mind. Turning back to God can take time. But God waits for us. Take, for example, Israel's experience of exile, no doubt a self-inflicted injury. Though Israel's experience of exile was a bitter one, many saw the cataclysm as an occasion for repentance and renewal. God allowed the Babylonian exile in the same way that he allowed the prodigal son to run off and squander his father's inheritance on riotous living. Time spent in the Babylonian wilderness prepared the hearts of some Israelites over time. Slowly and reluctantly, some exiles began to turn away from their past idols and turn towards the promises of the good shepherd. And yes, turning back to God can be painful, but God is always waiting there patiently to receive his lost sheep. For there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one lost sheep who repents than over 99 self-righteous sheep who see no need for God's mercy or forgiveness at all. This is all part of the shepherd's gentle way of gathering his flock. But gathering one sheep at a time, again, takes time. And God's gift of time, his patience for us, gives us an opportunity not only to repent, but to have our faith tested and refined. Joseph was thrown into a pit by his brothers. Egypt enslaved a whole race of people. And Joseph and the Hebrew people could hardly be blamed for these miserable circumstances. Yet these trials and tribulations drove God's people to cry out for salvation and thirst for deliverance from a Redeemer. These trials made the people of God yearn for the Redeemer with every fiber of their nature. While never willing these evil circumstances upon anyone, God still used Israel's trials and suffering for his own good purposes. In the midst of their struggles, God's people came to recognize again and again their absolute need for a redeemer. Even the sufferings of Israel endured throughout its history point to the redemptive passion of Christ, to his cross, and to the cross that his followers must bear. Yes, out of the darkness, the light of Christ still shone, and the darkness did not overcome the people of Israel, just as it will not overcome the people of his church. If we look at the Old Testament as one prolonged advent, we can see that God may be up to something. He had something in mind when he made his people wait so long. Since Adam and Eve left the garden, God has been preparing the hearts of his people by providing them ample time to turn to him, 
to refine their trust in him, and to better understand his promises. Most significantly, God was preparing the hearts of his people to receive his son, Jesus Emmanuel. As one church father put it, the Old Testament was carrying Christ in its womb. The Torah was pregnant with Christ. Mary's gestation and birth of Jesus was nine months. But the Old Testament has been gestating Christ for centuries before her. And yet even after such a long gestation period, a long period of preparation and waiting, many still rejected the Messiah when they finally met him. Their hearts had been waiting for so long. They were prepared to receive the coming of the Messiah, but not this Messiah, not this Christ. And still, even after the good shepherd was crucified, God did not smite his creation. He did not give up on them and throw in the towel. Just as in the past, God did not give up on Adam and Eve or leave Joseph in the pit or leave his people in Babylon or leave his only begotten son on the cross. He did not leave his sheep then and he won't leave his sheep now. No, instead, God would resume the patient, slow, gentle work of gathering his flock. Today we might ask, God, well, why Christ has taken so long to return in glory? We might think that after two millennia of waiting upon the Lord, that he's never coming back. Then in all the time that has passed since Christ's first advent, his incarnation, We should see not evidence of his broken promises, but rather God's loving patience at work. For the light of Christ was, is, and will be revealed to all flesh, as Isaiah tells us. And bit by bit, little by little, we continue to hope that all people, both Jew and Gentile, shall be gathered into the loving arms of the Good Shepherd. It is our hope that the voice of the Good Shepherd will, in God's good time, be a stranger to no one. For he knows us and calls us by name. But we hope and pray that all shall know his name before his return. With a hope so bold, so splendid and glorious as this, perhaps waiting on the Lord is worth it. Amen.
Would you please stand? Let us confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Prayers of the People. Let us, by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving, make our requests known to God, saying, Hear our prayer. That this Advent we may prepare our hearts and minds, our lives and the world, for the coming of Christ in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that we may offer to you our worship and our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may strive for the well-being of all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That in the joys and sorrows of this life, we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world, for all who suffer violence and injustice, we pray for the people of Ethiopia and Iran. May we be strengthened to strive for God's peace, justice, and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honoring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the renewal of the church in faith, love, and service. For all people in Christ, we pray for our bishops, for the clergy, for the life of each parish within this diocese, and for all those who are gathered and watching here today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful, and the bereaved, grant them mercy and relief, and strengthen all who bring comfort, care, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our St. John's prayers, we pray for the sick. Bernadette Tong, Selma Peng, Liu Chan Lin Oi, Fariba Mafi, Connie Bratt, William Chow, and for all our parishioners and relatives who are not well. We pray in thanksgiving for Canon Edmund Durr, Leung Wang Kit, and Tang Sik Ying having stability after their treatment. May God's healing continue. For those continuing in treatments or recovery, we pray for Vanji Chow, Kan Luk Shaw, or John Litt, Ivy Litt. We pray for expectant mother, Pastor Ginny. May God strengthen and protect her and her baby to be born. May God bless Ginny and Gavin to experience much grace and overflow with peace, love, and joy. 
We pray for Lam Choi Yuk Chun, who has passed into eternal rest. May God's light perpetual shine upon her. And may God comfort Ella and Edison Lee and her family and relatives. We give thanks for the birthdays of Lai Hu Ying Ling, Thomas Ng, Elaine Kwan, Lisa Hartman, and Christine Lee. We pray for the safety of Teresa Yun as she travels. The altar flowers have been given in thanksgiving by Thomas and Eudora Ng, in memory of Lam Choi Yuk Chun by Ella and Edison Lee, in memory of loving husband Mr. N. K. Liu by Liu Chan Lin Oi, in mem memory of loving father Wong Yin Fong by Gabrielle and Vanya Wong, in memory of the loving husband Wong Fin Fong by Wong Chan Yan Fong, and in memory of Chow Tam Pek Chan, Mr. Doug Saunders, and Mr. Wong Yin Fong by Eddie and Veronica Lee. We pray for St. John's Ministries, for Shruti Stephen, who is preparing to receive holy baptism. We pray for more volunteers to operate live streaming and create PowerPoint, and especially for the training of Trevor Chung, Anson, and Shruti Stephen. We pray for our Advent online pre programs and preparations, for lessons and carol services, for appreciating Handel's Messiah, virtual caroling, etc. We pray for our music ministry, our worship team, our vocal ensemble, our choir and organists. We pray for our visual art and design ministry, for Teresa Yun, Eudora Ng, Godfrey Ho, and for Teresa Ng and Teresa Chin, who is painting the 14 Stations of the Cross for our worship space. In our York Mills Deanery, we pray for St. George on Young and their parish priest, Leonard Leader. In this COVID-19 pandemic, we pray for the control, prevention, and fight against COVID-19 in countries around the world, especially Iran, India, Europe, the United States, Canada, and Greater Toronto. We pray for those making decisions to have the wisdom and courage to take effective measures and for all people to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. We pray for the research and development of the vaccine and medicine against COVID-19 and fair cooperation around the world. We pray for our hospitals to function safely and to be able to withstand the increasing demands and challenges. We pray for all who work in hospitals and on front lines. We pray for those who have become sick during the pandemic and have difficulty receiving medical help and for those patients whose surgery or treatment have been postponed. Let us commend ourselves all for whom we pray, to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. Gathering our prayers into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us boldly to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Announcements. Many thanks to Reza, our reader, our tech team, John, Teddy, Eudora, and Thomas. We thank you, Allison, who pre-recorded the music. What's coming up is the Bible study at 11.30. If you'd like to join us, we're on Chapter 4 in St. John's Gospel. This Thursday, we'll have Handel's Messiah at 7.30. It's been a wonderful series. Now we'll be on part two with the famous Alleluia Chorus. Lessons and carols will be next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Please come and join us. And we have a carol sing on December the 15th at 7.30. We're invited to pre-record our Christmas greetings and then to upload them at sjactoronto.com by the 15th. Our Christmas worship service is December the 24th at 8 o'clock. It is my great pleasure to tell you that May Kong has been honored by becoming part of the Order of the Diocese of Toronto and that will be uh, live streamed on January the 1st. If you can't remember all the things I told you, write in your order of service, which was emailed to you on Friday, is this page, which will give you uh, an idea of everything that's coming up. And if you didn't get one, please call the office and we'll email one to you. Thank you. In closing, let us stand for the closing hymn. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Thank you. 